Hey guys, welcome to our channel Trent and Luke. This week we've come together with a few of our friends who you may recognise to discuss... 2014 was like the year of the gays. Yes, that's right. The 10 most shocking gay moments of 2014. Most of you are probably wondering why I'm doing this video. Because it's fun! And why the hell not? So sit down, relax and prepare to have... Gay old times! <laughs> Uh, yeah, or an orgy of jaw-dropping shot. Fuck yes! That's fantastic. So we kick it off with this. Oh. My. God. Before there was One Direction, before there was 5 SOS, there was the Jonas Brothers. So, Nick Jonas has appeared out of nowhere after a few years of being away. Nick Jonas. As we all know, he had a very huge comeback in 2014. Before this Nick Jonas section, I'm gonna need some wine. Oh, I had my problems with Nick Jonas this year because I felt like he was queer baiting the community just to be like, oh, come look at how hot I am and look at how nice my abs look. It turned out that he wasn't playing us this entire time and that the character on the TV show that he was starring on is struggling with his sexuality. <sighs> I just need a moment. Would I get in bed with Nick Jonas? Of course I would. But, I mean, I don't think he's the hottest thing since, you know, Kellen Mutz or Channing Tatum. He then went to a gay bar and stripped down in front of the audience with a bunch of gay guys on stage as well. And it was the most amazing thing. It was quite a good video. In my opinion, it ended a little bit too early. <laughs> Speaking of gay guys, this next one will get you in the mood for a bit of Gaga. The first thought that popped into my head was, this kid needs to make a YouTube channel or a Vine or something because he went viral and guess what? He did. Yes, it's the sassy kid himself at number nine, Brendan Jordan. Brendan, my queen. So basically the news was going and he started dancing, Lady Gaga dance moves, and it was just like, wow. Look at this kid over here, he's dancing like a proper little diva. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I was rooting for Brendan so much. I was there, I was like, go Brendan, go Brendan. Brendan? Do you have dance classes? Because I would love to join them. He is the gayest person I have ever seen in my entire- He's going- I- I'm obsessed with Brendan. Oh my god, are you really? I am. <gasps> when I first saw this video, I was literally just like, work, bitch, work, oh my god. Face, face, face. <laughs> this, this is my impression On girl. his left, and she's like, she was jealous. She's like, why can't I do that? I'm so glad people like you are in the world to brighten up stupid newscasters. I don't think anyone was taking any notice of the news or the news reporter. It was literally all focused on Brendan. He should start a channel of his own. He does have a channel of his own. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Coming in at number eight, you got she mail. Holy crap. Now, didn't this just go absolutely insane? Things like this really actually kind of annoy me. So next is RuPaul's she -mail intro gets banned. And, you know, in some places, she -mail is classed as offensive to people. I always find someone has always got a problem with something someone does. I think if someone was intentionally going out to hurt someone, then it's absolutely fair enough. Different story. Exactly. But I don't think anyone called it she male to offend anyone. So you have a show based on the principle of men dressing as women to perform in an art. And yet, we're all offended because they call it she male for the male. These are men pretending to be women. If you can't call it she male on RuPaul's Drag Race of all places, where can you? Call it she -mail. I think that people just get really butthurt about things, and yes, I use that term because it's also funny because we're talking about gay people and butt and anal sex, so. Here at number seven is our favorite A list family. This is actually number seven, but for me personally, it's my number one. So Angelina's just featured in a movie, Unbroken. Her whole entire family has just walked out onto the carpet and they're ready to go in, to go and see it, and they're all dressed up in nice suits and things like that. But you will notice one thing. One of the boys that are dressed up on the red carpet with Brad Pitt is actually their daughter. Angelina Jolie's daughter is gender assigned at eight years old. Angelina Jolie is one of my favorite actresses of all time. And now that she's 
accepting her child for being transgendered, it just made me love her even more. I think the fact that Brad and Angelina are handling this in such like a, it's like a mature manner, it really says a lot. Here's the part that upsets me the most, it's the fact that John, formerly known as Shiloh, is way cuter than I ever was in my entire life as a child. Well first of all, I guess it's Angelina Jolie's son now, right? Um, honestly, I think this is fucking awesome. Am I allowed to curse? I'm going to. Celebrities set trends. Not Transgender is not a trend, no. but everyone follows what celebrities do, and hopefully this is a step up into this is the norm. This is a normal thing. If Shiloh decides she wants to be called John right now, fine. If later on she decides she doesn't want to be anymore, fine. It's always a dream come true when a straight guy who every gay guy fancies comes out. Here's Connor Franta at number six. Um, Connor Franta coming out um, for reasons undisclosed was not a surprise to me. I've been watching Connor for two years now, and I just knew he was gay. I was absolutely 100% waiting for this because I, I just knew. Dear Connor, I know without a doubt that you were gay from the very beginning, but that's okay. <laughs> Connor Franta, congratulations, Connor. Congratulations. Want to collab, Connor? But I knew. I knew it was gay. I knew the motherfucker was there. Connor Franta coming out on YouTube was such a pivotal moment for me this year because I never realized how badly I wanted to kiss his face. But I kid you not, watching this video, as soon as you see it and you start the video, you can just see his serious face and you're like, okay. Shit's about to get real right now. And then suddenly he just says, you know, I'm gay. I bet there wasn't a dry eye in the house. As far as him coming out, I think it's awesome that, I mean, over the last year, he gained the mentality where he felt comfortable enough to be gay. And it was such a big deal for such a big YouTuber to release his true self because he has probably been bottling up those feelings for like a really, really long time. I can imagine him now being on like the LGBT panels and like VidCon and like the YouTube gatherings, like playlists and stuff in the city and stuff. So I can imagine him seeing him now on those. And just missing it out onto the top five is one of our favorite TV actresses. So next we're going to talk about Laverne Cox, the very first transgender role in TV and she's on the cover of Time magazine as well. Oh my god, I fucking love Laverne Cox. I am obsessed with Orange is the New Black, number one, okay? My friends, all the lesbians on Twitter, all the lesbians on YouTube and Twitter and Tumblr world kept telling me to watch Orange is the New Black. I was like, what the hell? It can't be that good of a show. It is. Laverne Cox from it, she is incredible. And um, she has been around for a while, but for us mainstream basic bitches who aren't that um, in it, um, wouldn't have known her until she did this role. Let's be honest here, Laverne Cox in Orange is the New Black is one of the only reasons I'm going to tune in for season three. She is such an icon for what the trans community has achieved over the years and how far they are going to go in the future. Laverne Cox is just such an amazing inspiration. I think Laverne is awesome and she's a hot mama and I can't wait for the new season of Orange is the New Black so don't get me started on this. I think it's amazing. I think it's such a wonderful thing that we advance so much as a society that a transgender role model can be on the cover of Time magazine. Time magazine is one of the, one huge magazine, and to be put on the cover of that is amazing. So coming in at number four is the most controversial event of 2014. This is basically what happened in Russia. So you know when um, you know you're gay and you really don't want to be gay and so you're so angry that you're gay inside and you can't tell anybody. So instead, you do the complete opposite and so you start hating everything that is gay because you identify as gay. Let's just say Putin is one of those gray boxes on Grinder in Russia. And the whole ban on the Sochi Olympics was totally okay because nobody watches the Winter Olympics. Me and Putin, as you can imagine, go way back. We used to have some gay old times. <laughs> I do remember this. I remember that Russia did not want gay people in the Olympics. I think one of my favorite parts of the Olympics was seeing how many countries decided to give the big old middle finger to Russia in terms of their support of the LGBT community. Regarding the uh, Russian Olympics, can we please talk about Johnny? Oh my god. The guy with the pink blazer. Johnny Weir, who is the gayest figure skater you have ever seen in your life. Mm. Uh, he was looking fierce. I'm not even kidding with you. Ha went. He didn't give a shit. He went in his pink blazers, with his fucking hair pieces. Good for him. He did not care. And going into our top three, possibly the gayest wedding of all time. So, in 2014, there was the Grammys. Uh, Macklemore was performing one of his songs, Mary Lambert was doing a thing on the song, and then all of a sudden, 
freaking Queen Latifah comes out and Madonna and then all these people in the audience with suits are in the audience in the, like the aisles and everything and they start just to marry them. More Ryan Lewis, same love, Grammys, was super cute. Like Beyonce was at your wedding. Can you understand? Wow. Okay. I couldn't tell if the massive gay wedding at the Grammys this past year was beautiful or I don't know, tacky. I think this was another massive thing. The fact that this was something like the Grammys and they like, they happily had this on the show. They had those gay marriages happening. I thought was a really, really big point. I was pissed off that the gay community was pissed off at Macklemore saying that he was using gay people for fame and views and blah, 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 exploiting, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, shut up. We fight our whole lives to get the straight, cis, white guy you know, to support us. And now that one is, you're bitching that he's not supporting you in the right way. And it just, it really upset me. But I thought that moment was beautiful when all of them kissed. Oh my God. Just missing out on the top spot. We have a bunch of celebrities coming out and marriage equality. So as of 2014, so many countries and states and everything have one by one been accepting gay marriage in their state and whatever. So woo for that. <laughs> woo. Uh, woo. And also with that, a shitload of celebrities have come out. The 2014, where gay marriage is legal in most places except for where I live. Yeah! Gay marriage took the country by storm this year. Oh, gay marriage is now legal in the UK. Now, it did get legalized in loads of other countries as well, but because I do live in the UK, this is exciting for me. Coming out seems to have been a trend in 2014. We got Tim Cook, the CEO of the biggest company ever, Apple, coming out. Tom Daly just... We just got his calendar, so... <laughs> Tom Daly's calendar? He's by a refrigerator because when you're thirsty... <laughs> oh, that's where we go. Who else came out? Ellen Page came out. Yeah, Sam Smith came out. Everybody's just jumping on the bandwagon. Why wouldn't you? It's fun. We have cooler parties than you. And here at number one, we have our most shocking moment of 2014. Okay, I'm gonna try and keep calm for this, but Eurovision, Conchita first, winning Eurovision was the best, to me, was the highlight of the year. Oh my god. Now, Eurovision, to people who aren't in like Europe, um, Eurovision is like the gay Olympics. I call it the gay Olympics. All these countries competing for like the best song of the like the year. I loved the fact that when you sat there and you watch a video and it starts and it zooms in on a and what you can see is a silhouette of this beautiful woman, this gorgeous dress, and the lights start coming out more, and you're like, oh, like, from what I can see, her face looks pretty, you keep going up, you keep going up, and then you look and you're like, oh. <laughs> well, at least that's what I was like. And then as soon as that light came up, and you saw her face, I got envious. And you know why I got envious? Because she had a beard. You know what I have to say to this? Fuck yes, she won Eurovision. <laughs> I'm an American, so I do not watch Eurovision. But I knew about the whole Kachina Worst thing happening at the time, and I found out she won, and I thought that was amazing. I feel like I saw this on Tumblr, and people were going fucking zerk. It was it was a shock factor, and I think that's why everyone went a bit crazy. And people probably think he looks very feminine, but then he has like such a rockin' beard. Can we just talk about how before eyebrows were on fleek, Conchita's beard was on fleek. Oh my god, Conchita winning Eurovision this year was one of the most beautiful moments in television history. No woman before has ever been able to rock a beard that well, and then Conchita came along and just slayed the scene. Way to bring bearded ladies back in style. Thank you so much guys for watching our 2014 Most Shocking Moments. Let us know in the comments below what your favourite moments were that you liked and disliked. And while you're there, don't forget to check out all the amazing YouTubers that featured in this video. Okay guys, we'll see you next week. Bye guys. Bye!